This lecture is going to cover the male reproductive system, uh, focusing specifically on the major structures and functions. Now, the major functions of the male reproductive system, of course, the main one is to reproduce, right? To be involved in the process of reproduction of the species. Um, in order for this to happen, there are some other things that have to happen. So these are almost like sub-functions, but they play a huge role in the ability to reproduce. One is the production of sperm, which happens in the testes. Sperm are the male sex cells, of course the equivalent of the eggs and the females. And then also the production of sex hormones. Now the main sex hormone in males is testosterone. We'll talk about that later. Now the testes are one of the major stru structures. Now these are the male gonads. They're paired. There are two of them. And they're sort of like the male equivalent to female ovaries. They're both paired and that's where the sex cells are made. In the case of the testes, it's where sperm is produced. Now the scrotum is the pouch of skin that surrounds the testes. And it keeps kind of the, tes the testes protected, and, but keeps them external from the body. They're not located inside the body. And there's a reason for this. Think about why that might be. The reason that the testes are located outside of the body is to keep the sperm at a cooler temperature than body temperature. When the sperm are kept at body temperature or a temperature that that's that high, they actually don't function properly. And so to keep the sperm more viable, you want to keep the temperature lower. Therefore, the testes are outside of the body. And then, of course, as we said before, the sperm are the male sex cells. Just like eggs, they have half the number of chromosomes So as a normal human cell. So instead of having 46, they have 23. And the reason for that is, again, when an egg and sperm come together, and the egg gets fertilized by the sperm, you get half your chromosomes from your father and half your chromosomes from your mother, 23 from each. Now within the testes, there's a structure called the seminiferous tubules, and this is actually where the sperm is made. And they're located within the testes, so to say that sperm is made in the testes is true, but the specific structure that does it is the seminiferous tubules. Now, right next to the testes, there's a series of coiled tubes called the epididymis. And this is where sperm are allowed to mature and kind of are stored. Now, leading from the epididymis is a tube called the vas deferens. Now, this connects the epididymis to the urethra. If you've ever heard of the term vasectomy, right, this is a surgical procedure that they can perform on males. And um, it's sort of like a form of birth control. It keeps a male from being able to impregnate a woman. And a vasectomy comes from the vas deferens. They're actually um, cutting off that connection at the vas deferens. And so the sperm cannot go from the epididymis to the urethra. Now, of course, we just said that the vas deferen connects up to the urethra. But there's a series of accessory glands and structures that sort of add on and help this male, the male reproductive system, the whole process that involved in it. And so one is the seminal vesicle, and this is a structure that sits at the base of the vas deferens, and it actually adds to the seminal fluids. So when a man ejaculates, it's not just simply sperm, there's more to it. The prostate gland is at the base of the bladder, and the urethra actually runs through the prostate gland. You can kind of see it in that picture, although it's a little hard to tell. And again, the prostate gland also adds to seminal fluid. Now there's a thing called an interstitial cell, and this is located between the testes, and it's responsible for secreting hormones to kind of keep the male reproductive system properly functioning. Now as we said before, the vas deferens connects the epididymis to the urethra. So now the urethra is actually the tube that leads to the external body or outside of the body. Um, in a male, it has two functions. It is responsible for carrying both urine and semen. Now, females do have a urethra, but it only has one function in a female, and that's to carry urine. But in a male, it carries both urine and semen. Another accessory gland is the cowper gland. It's near the prostate, and it also adds to seminal fluid. And then, of course, the penis is the actual male excretory and copulatory organ. Now, it's both because, again, the urethra is in the penis and it has two functions. It functions 
to carry urine and it also functions to carry semen. So that's what makes it part of both systems. And finally at the beginning we did talk about um, the main male sex hormone which is testosterone but I wanted to go into testosterone in a little bit more detail with you guys. Um, it like the female main sex hormone estrogen, testosterone is responsible for developing sex organs. Um, at puberty it really kicks in and it creates things like the production of sperm. And it's also responsible for various secondary sexual characteristics such as facial hair, deeper voice, things along those lines. And sort of an interesting fact, baldness can actually be the result of testosterone production, which explains why you see baldness a lot more frequently in males than females. Anyway, that's it. Thanks.